A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. I hope you enjoyed my Thursday video um, with Pebbles and shooting with the Nikon Z9. That was such a great experience and it was really good fun shooting um, Pebbles and Fox. Uh, I was going to go out and shoot some more woodland for this video, but the weather here, we've had some storms coming through the UK and it's so windy that shooting woodland would be really difficult to do. So I thought what I'd do is I'd show you the new tools in Lightroom and how I'm going to use those tools to edit a photo. And I wanted to edit a photo from the island trip that I did, the one which actually I can tell you now was was meant to be a trip to shoot the Nikon Z9, but I got really ill when I was in Ireland, so I had to come home. Um, so unfortunately I had to reschedule it, but it was a blessing in disguise because if I hadn't come back and all I would have done was shoot waves in Ireland and it was much better obviously shooting pebbles which was so much fun. So I'm gonna, um, whilst it's throwing it down with rain outside, really windy, I'm gonna sit and show you how I would use the new tools and also how I'd edit this photo from Ireland. So let's get straight into it. So basically I've got this um, image here and it's exposed pretty well. The first thing I do on an image is I'll actually just mess about with the exposure. So I did take bracketed images for this, but to be honest, I think it's fine as it is. So if I just dial down the exposure, you can see that I've blown out the sun there, but that's not gonna matter because I'm gonna make that very sort of soft and um, very ethereal looking. So you know, there's gonna be a really nice graduation from that. So that's not gonna matter too much. Um, and then if I go up, I just want to have a look in the shadows and check there's no issues in the shadows. And there isn't. Um, I think they all look pretty good, really. So I'm quite happy with this. It's a good exposure, good thing to work on. So we've obviously got this new toolbar up here and we've got this masking, which I'm going to come into. Um, it's effectively the same sort of tools that we had before. There's a few improvements, which I'll, I'll go through and how I'm going to use those but mostly it just helps you organize your masks and visualize your masks a lot better. Um, so, but first of all, let's just start with a basic edit on this. This, this was such an amazing um, evening, by the way. I led down on the grass here and I, was, I felt so ill, um, but it was such an amazing light that over, the la over three hours, I got all sorts of shots. I got this one, I got this one, <laughs> I got this one in the other direction, um, I got this shot, all taken from the same spot. So um, this one was right at the end of the, of, of the night where the sun just peeped out of this little gap, you know, that perfect light that you sort of dream of. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do a basic edit. So I'm not gonna worry about burning this out at the moment because obviously I can dial that back later if I want to. I'm just gonna increase the exposure a little bit, increase the contrast, increase the shadows quite a bit. I'm gonna increase the clarity a little bit, which I might dial back in some areas, but I'm gonna increase the overall clarity because I think this is gonna pull out this a little bit better. And I'm just gonna have a little bit of mess around with the curve. I'm just gonna, because it's my style, I'm just gonna just increase the, the, the black level so that there's not a black black. And then I'm just gonna dial down the curve a little bit here and then back up here and here just to add a little bit more contrast. I might just play with the colors as well. So certainly the luminance of the green, I just want to increase the luminance of the green. I've got to be careful with the orange because that's going to affect the sun. So I don't want to mess about with that too much. The saturation, I probably want to increase the saturation of the green as well. I think that's a fairly good basic edit. I've gone from there to there, uh, but there's a lot to do on this image. So what I want to do is, the main thing is this sun here, I want to, um, make it larger because because when I was there it was it it was such amazing conditions because it was so windy it was blowing all the sea up and creating this haze and it created this really nice sort of glow from the sun so I want to try and recreate that so this is where I start using the tools so I'm going to go into one of the tools here you can set this mask button now I'm really rubbish at showing you how to use software so to actually use the software you better you look at somebody else's video but what I'm gonna try and do is show you how I use that software 
to edit a photo. Um, so <clears throat> if you're just looking for software tutorial, maybe go somewhere else, but if you're looking for how I might use that software to edit my photo, you're on a good video. Right, so I'm going to do a, um, a radial gradient here, right in the middle of the sun, and I'm just gonna do one like that. Now, what's really good is that you can control the feather here um, for the radial gradient, but we've got this here, which allows you to visualize it a little bit better. So I want it to come right out from the middle and gradually fade away as it goes out to the edges. So that's a good example of what I want. Um, and then what I'm gonna do with that, um, by the way as well, you can also visualize that um, white on black so you can see exactly what it looks like, a little bit like the masking in Photoshop. Um, but I'm just gonna leave the color overlay on and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase the exposure of that um, and then I'm going to decrease the clarity and decrease the dehaze. So you can see I'm getting a little bit more glow now. It's softening it down a little bit and that's what I want. But it's gone very white, so that's not good. So I need to increase the temperature of it, which is good. And I'll probably increase the saturation a little bit. And then I'm gonna colorize it. So this color button here allows me to colorize it. And I can do all sorts of weird things with this, turn it all sorts of colors. But what I wanna do is I just want to get a ready orange here and just colorize it. The reason I want to do that is I feel like it's, it's, it's important when you've got a burnt out area. This is burnt out in the middle. If I, if I did this, you can see that that's burnt out. I don't want that to be pure white. So I'm gonna colorize it so it's, it's, it's just slightly off white um, and that will help um, when I come to print it or anything else, it'll have some, some color to it. So we're getting there with that. Um, but the problem is that it's spreading out quite a, a long way. I can probably actually increase the exposure a little bit more of it. Yeah, so that, that's good, but it's, it's spreading out a little bit too much. So what I need to do now, and this is, where, um, this is where this is really useful, these new tools, is that I want to just create an intersection with a luminosity mask. So I'm just gonna click the option button, click intersect, and then click luminance range. And this sounds really complicated, but what it allows me to do basically is I can say, um, don't have this radial filter affect the darker tones. So if I just move this to the right, you can see that it's just not affecting the darker tones. Now that's right, quite harsh, but what you can do, which is really clever now, is that I can say, rather than just change the endpoint and start at this black and, and go to this point here, I can fade it in. So I can move that back and keep this here. So I can then fade it in and get a very soft sort of feel to it. So basically what I wanna do is I wanna say, affect the blacks a little bit and then affect it more and more and more until it comes to the brighter tones. So I get a really nice fade from this radial filter I put on here that's brightening up over this rock, which is what you would get in reality, um, because obviously as the light gets d dispersed, you're gonna get less effect on, on the rock around the corner here. So you can do that and I can come back and mess about with that, but I'll do that to about there. So, but then what's really clever is I can go back to the radial gradient here and I can move it out more. So what I wanna do now is I wanna pull it out more to the left. So what I can do is I can just pull it out to the left here. And as you can see, it's affecting the sky because that's sort of a mid-tone, but it's not affecting these rocks here as much. So it almost looks like it's going behind this rock. Um, and that just works really well. And it's a fantastic way of dealing with sun and when you're shooting directly into the sun, editing it afterwards. And you can create a really, really nice effect with it. And it works perfectly for this, this um, image. Um, I've just noted on, noticed on this image that I've got a few um, spots, sensor spots on. So I'll just clean those up. One thing I really liked about these and known was the sensor shield. Just having that um, shield when you're changing lenses. I mean, I wouldn't have all these spots if I had that, which would have been pretty good. Anyway, just get rid of them all. It was quite a lot because I was really windy and I was changing my lens quite a bit, just sat in this spot thinking, I just want to be at home because I felt so ill. <laughs> right, so there we go. I've got rid of most of those. I'm going to do a little bit more work on the sky now. So I'm going to add, That's th this is one mask here that I've, I've done. You can see where it is. I'm going to add another mask now, a, a linear gradient. And this linear gradient I'm going to apply to the sky 
and I'm going to darken the sky down. Um, probably add a bit of contrast, maybe increase decrease the shadows a little bit. I might warm it up a little bit. Yeah, so that, that's looking pretty good. But I don't want this to impact this so much. I want, I, so basically what I want to do is I want to create a linear gradient with a little bit of a curve in it. So what I can now do to this um, linear gradient is I can subtract a radial gradient. And if I just subtract a radial gradient, that's like that one that I had before, then you can see that that's just allowed that light to push into the sky and, and not darkened it too much. So I've still got that sort of glowy feeling. Um, so that's worked really well. I'll probably add another one, another linear gradient to the sky a little bit higher up, just at a slight angle this time. I don't need to do the radial gradient and I'm just gonna darken that even more. I wanna create quite a lot of impact here. And then I might go back to this mask here and I'm just going to add a little bit more saturation. So that's good, that's um, good for the sky. Now I want to do something to this area here. So I want to sort of increase the texture in this and add a little bit more clarity to it. So to do that, I'm just gonna use a brush. There's nothing really special I need to do here. So I'm just gonna to go to the brush. So I'll just um, select a a flow of about 25, so I have to apply it four times before I have the full effect. I, I, can, can, I can limit that by lowering the density, but I'm, I don't need to. And then I'm just going to increase the exposure, increase the whites, and obviously I can dial this back later, increase the shadows and increase the clarity. And then I'm just gonna paint on where I feel that I need that. And I can go over in a few times if I, need, I think I need it. Basically, what I want to do is I just want to pull out some of these details in this rock, um, especially where the lighter tones are. So I think that'll do. Maybe I can increase the exposure a little bit more, add a bit of contrast, and then increase the whites a bit. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. So let's have a look where we stand. It's not looking bad. I need to pull out a lot more um, in, in the bottom area of it. So I'm going to go to a linear gradient here, put it on here. And again, I don't need to be too careful with this, I don't think. I'm just going to increase the exposure, increase the contrast, increase the shadows, and make it a little bit warmer. That's all I need to do. I don't need to do anything particularly special there. I think that looks pretty good. Um, the, the, the other thing that I want to do is I just want to pull out some of the yellows um, and oranges in this highlighted bit here. So again, I'm just going to use a brush um, and I'm just going to brush on a little bit of exposure here. So just in these bits, just the highlights. I mean, it's not picking up a lot of the highlights, but I just want to pull back that. And also I'm just going to increase the clarity. I just want to, by increasing the clarity quite a lot, I get that really nice sort of glow there. So now I've got all my masks here. I can visualize them. I can hover over them and see what's happening. Um, and I've done this rough and ready. I'd spend a lot more time um, fine tuning this. The only final one I want to do is I want to create a mask. Um, so I'm just gonna do a color range for the C. I'll just grab the C there. Now, obviously that's similar to a lot of other colors. I can refine that by just reducing it down. And then that has just selected the C, but I don't want to change this bit of C here. So if I want to do that, then obviously what I can do is I can just subtract, use a radial gradient and I can invert it. <laughs> Sounds quite complicated, but if I just do a radial gradient there, you can see that that has subtracted the C. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to do the inverse of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go invert and then that will just select this area of the sea. Um, and what I can do, now do is I can increase the exposure, I can increase the contrast, I can make it a little bit bluer or greener, depending on what I think it's gonna be like. Maybe add a bit of saturation to it. Again, I'm doing this really quick. Um, maybe add a bit of clarity to it, and it just makes it pop a little bit more. So um, I've done that fairly quick, r rough and ready, but I think you get an idea of how you can combine masks. The key thing, is that with these masks, um, you have the ability to use a brush, a linear gradient, a radial gradient, a color range, and a luminance, all independently, 
or you can mix those together. You can either subtract one or add one to, 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 to the, the, the total mask, or you can intersect them, and if you intersect them, it deletes the bit um, where, uh, or it uses the bit where it's intersected. So that's pretty good. There is also select subject and select sky. For landscapes, I'm not sure about the select subject. I mean, if you click select subject on here, it selects some random things, so it's, it's useless really. Um, and select sky, I think works sometimes, but to be honest, I think you need to be a little bit more careful about how you do it. Um, so if it works, that's fantastic, but um, I prefer to use the, the gradient filter when I'm doing things with the, with, with the sky. Obviously, I'd spend a lot more time on there. I think the horizon might not be straight either. Um, a good way to check the horizon, what I use, is I just zoom in and I move it to the top um, and just see if it's level with the top. It's not, so I might just want to just draw a line on that about there. There we go, that's right. Um, I feel like just to finish it off, it needs a radial gradient on the whole thing, but inverted. So I'm now inverted that and then I can change. This is so nice. I really like this, this interface. I can just change that and reduce the exposure a little bit of the, of the outside. I'd obviously spend a lot more time editing this, but we've gone from that to that by use of some of the gradient masks, the radial masks, the luminous masks, and the color masks. So I hope that's helped. There's a winner from a competition a few videos ago of um, a couple of printed images from um, Ireland. So I'll mention that in a minute. Before I do, then I want to say thanks to this week's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. Um, as you know, Squarespace have been a fantastic help to this channel, but they're not just a help for me, um, in, in terms of sponsoring the video, they help me massively when I want to add things to my website, like my calendar, <laughs> a little plug for my calendar. Um, this is October's from next year, so it looks one of my favorite images of all time, this wise. Um, but there's still a few left of that, not many, so if you want a calendar and get them quick, but they allow me to put my calendar on my website, Squarespace, and I, I can honestly say it's the most useful tool that, that I use. Now, obviously I get my copy of Squarespace for free, and them sponsoring my channel, but I would, without a shadow of a doubt, go back to Squarespace. And in fact, I used Squarespace way before they started sponsoring me. And Squarespace make it super easy if you just want to set up a portfolio to share your images. Uh, you can control the sizes, you can put high quality images up there, you can make it look fantastic, rather than just posting them on Instagram, which is just so, um, pathetic when it comes to image quality to be quite frank um, so make sure you do have a website and if you are going to use Squarespace then you can get 10% off by using the offer code Nigel or going to forward slash Nigel okay on to the winner from the, the most liked comment uh, from a few videos ago and that was Kyle Tunis for his brilliant idea of just going to a location blind no research or, or nothing so I don't know how I'm going to do that I just have to drive my car and think stop um, but it's a good idea. It's down in my list of videos to do. So at some point, I'll hopefully do that video. But Kyle, well done. Um, if you reach out to me, I'll send you those two prints in, in the post. And thanks for um, sharing your idea in the comment. Um, I've got another competition that I'm going to run um, to anybody that's signed up for my e-newsletter. And the details of that will be in my e-newsletter. The link's in the description below if you haven't signed up already. Um, I also send out offers um, of my masterclass and things like that, but also tips and images that I don't share elsewhere. Okay, that's it for this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hopefully the weather's gonna improve and the, all the leaves won't have blown off the trees here in the UK, because it has been a pretty horrendous week. And I can't wait to do some woodland photography. Until next Sunday, bye.